I'm Dale Campbell from Still Moving and I'm here to talk to you about C-Stands. The first thing I'm going to do is take off my wedding ring. When you're handling any kind of heavy metal stand, you are married to nothing but the stand. Your wife will thank you when you don't have a degloved skeleton finger. We're going to look at some C-Stand etiquette now. This is how we do it at Still Moving and it's the safest way that we think we can operate C-Stands. Rule on, super basic, most important, it's set up wrong at the moment, and that is righty-tighty, lefty-loosey. All we've got to do is make sure that as you stand behind the grip head, everything is on your right-hand side. And the reason is the way that the grip heads work, if it's tightened and everything's on the right-hand side, it will actually get tighter and tighter. So we'll cinch this down, and then if I pull on this side, it's getting harder and harder to actually move that down to rule number two. This is to do with the positioning of the grip arm. Now often I will see people using a C-stand, positioning the grip arm completely horizontal like that. Supposing that we wanted to get a flag to this exact position just here, all we have to do, loosen that off, extend it down a little bit more, lock it in position, and then fly up on the first riser. And then you'll have it in the same position just there, but actually now it's not gonna be an eye poke hazard. Rule number three, the longest leg should lead the load, and that should also be positioned, if we can, towards the most precious thing on set, because then the last place this stand is gonna fall is in that direction. It can go off to this side, it can go off to that side, it could go off to the back just here, but right in front, that cone coming out from the stand is out of the fall zone. Rule number four of RC stand etiquette, for goodness sake, put a sandbag on that leg. It's the first thing you should do, get the sandbag on there. Why didn't we do it before? Because we had to do the rules in a certain order and we didn't want to get the sandbag in before we talked about the more exciting stuff because you would have got bored, wouldn't you? Rule number five, yeah, there are five. There's another one after this as well, just cool your heels. So we are trying to look now at how you actually take all of these risers and grip arms and craziness up to some kind of height to actually use the thing. To start off with, whatever you're trying to do with it and whatever you're loading onto it should be loaded in and then you should be positioning yourself so that uh, if you've got a flag, for example, the flag is in the correct position. There we go, we've got a flag, we're putting it up to there. If you're trying to get height out of this extension arm just here, then that should be done at this point because it's gonna be really hard to do that when you're up like two meters high in the air. As we go to rise everything up, it is very important that you don't go up on the second riser first because then Lo and behold, if you want to get it up any higher, you've got to bring it back down and then take it back up. So always start on the top riser. Rule number six of C-stand etiquette. You need to keep your location safe. Lovely as the C-stand is, it can mark up floors, you can ding things, you can put that through a drywall. So we use tennis balls. Tennis balls are a wonderful way of protecting your location from your stand. Once you've got it on the end, you can then move this around and you're not going to like poke it through a window as easily. It lets people know that that's where the end of the stand is. It gives you a little bit more visibility when you have that flown up at height that there's an end of a stand there. So when you bring it down, you don't accidentally poke yourself in the eye. Also, the legs just here, positioning tennis balls on those legs will cushion the stand when it's on say someone's lovely 18th century wood floor that you don't want to scrape up, put tennis balls on all the legs, and that'll mean that you're not going to scrape the floor that you're on. It's just that, it's only that, it's not going to scrape the floor. Rule number seven, I lied. The six apply when you are free and single, but now we're going to work with others. So there's a seventh surprise rule. Taryn is going to come in and I'm going to pass him a C stand. We both done it wrong because now if Taryn passed me the C stand back and I take it like this, I can squeeze his knuckles between the column and the extension arm. The correct way of doing it would be to grab the extension arm and the column and then pass it off as so, and then it's all fine. No one's gonna get their fingers crushed. Two thumbs up. 